Governors and states make drastic measures in their territories over herders, farmer clashes. Governor Kerdelu signs anti grazing law, bill into law, and Governor Masuri stops transportation of cattle from Casino to other states. He signs an executive order today. And President Muhammad Buhari today launched a 20,000 job scheme for graduates in partnership with the United Nations. We dig into what that means in the scheme of things, especially we have a 33% unemployment rate. Hello everyone and welcome to Politics Today live from our Buja studio. I'm Sean Joaquin Malay. Welcome to the program everyone. It's a very packed show. So stay with us everyone because we need to break down some of these issues for you to understand what is happening. Some of your biggest stories in the land. Let's begin from the presidential villa today where we understand that the candidates of the All Progressive Congress APC in their number of governorship race Senator Andy Uba has uh, visited President Muhammadu Buhari today. He was there in company of the chairman of the APC Caretaker Committee, Governor May Malabuni, alongside Senator Hope Uzodima, who is the chairman of the APC Campaign Organization for Anambra Governorship Election, and also Governor Yaya Bello of Kogi State. President Buhari presented a candidate with the party's flag as a sign of his support. And he said that it will be rooting for him. Take a listen to the president. Well, we have some other stories for you on our political roundup. The Odo State Governor, Rutimi Akirjalu, has signed into law the anti-grazing bill passed by the State House of Assembly. The state government says the governor signed the bill into law in his office today. He said that the move is in line with the resolution of the Southern Governors Forum in its last meeting in Lagos, where September 1st was set as the deadline for governors in southern Nigeria to sign the anti-open grazing bill into law. The Kwara State Governor has held a meeting with various Fulani groups and elders to fashion out ways and seek for solutions to curb rampant kidnapping and insecurity in the state. The Fulani group on their part believe the need to resettle them and get them educated in Western education could be the solution. Our problem that has become a problem in Nigeria today is the problem of education. Your Excellency, there is no way you will rule over more than 45 million people that are uneducated in the country. The River State Governor, Yesterweke, is optimistic that the state will earn foreign exchange from the health sector when his administration completes its cancer and cardiovascular diagnostics and treatment center. Governor Wike said this after inspecting the level of engineering work at the site in Obiakwa local government area. The governor, who also inspected the progress of work at a proposed site for a world-class estate in Port Harcourt local government area, says providing the right infrastructure to meet the aspiration of the people is the hallmark of politics. It's a very beautiful area that everybody wants to learn. So you see, you need to build cities, you need to expand Port Harcourt, and that's what we're doing. We should be able to have understanding. The Ogun State government has been reacting to an allegation of misappropriation of 64 billion naira belonging to the 20 local government areas of the state from June 2019 through March 2021. The government says the said amount as claimed by a member of opposition party in the state was spent on projects, payment of primary school teachers and other expenditures at the local level. The state government challenged their position to come up with the expenditure to justify his claim. I'm challenging the person that alleged you. As you go and sum up these expenses and net you up from what we got, and whatever the resource is, you should be able to tell good people of our state. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. So, perhaps the biggest job of government is what gets us talking. 
That is security. Anywhere you live, you think about security. But it does look like the governors of the state are thinking about taking measures of ensuring that their states are well secured. Several governors are taking those measures to secure the state in the face of the killings and kidnappings that we've seen by bandits and some of those who disguise as herders. Today, the Ondo State Governor, Rotimi Akredolu, signed into law the anti-grazing bill passed by the State House of Assembly. The state government says the governor signed the bill into law in his office today. It said that the move is in line with the resolution of the Southern Governors Forum at its last meeting in Lagos, where in September the 1st, they set a deadline for governors in southern Nigeria to sign the anti-open grazing bill into law. And in Katsina State, in the northwest region of the country, Governor Aminu Masari has issued an executive order banning the movement of cattle from the state to other parts of the country. The governor also ordered the total closure of the Jibia Gobin Bari Road to motorists while the Kankaras uh, Sheme Road was closed to commercial vehicles. He also banned the sale of petrol in jerry cans to motorists at filling stations. Well, the measures, according to Governor Masari, are to contain the security challenges bedeviling the state and the enforcement comes into effect today. Let's discuss this, everyone. These measures and the implications. These are not the only governors who are making these measures, but these are the ones who have made those moves today, and we're dissecting them for you. I'm being joined by two lawyers, Mr. Afamu Shigwe, senior advocate of Nigeria, and Mr. Daniel Buala, a lawyer and a member of the Lincoln Team in London. At virtual, um, and virtually is Senator Nicholas Tofuwomo in Ileoluji. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us tonight. Okay. I think I should begin with, uh, from you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Buala. This are measures taken by the governors. I mean, a lot of people have asked that the governor should take a bold move and take control of their territories. But it does look like some of them are making that move. It's interesting that we have seen Governor Masari make... It, it, it does look to me, this is one of uh, the most drastic measures that you see a governor make in the, uh, in the respect of um, uh, these grazing and cattle herders and uh, farmers uh, clash situation. What's your view on that, for example? Well, um, thank you for having me. In the same way that the president takes an oath of office to defend the constitution and protect the lives of Nigerians, the Constitution also provides for the governor of the state to swear to an oath uh, to uphold the Constitution and the laws of that land, the state, and then to do measures, to take measures that are necessary in uh, protecting the life of uh, the, the citizens of the state. Now, this is the only uh, situation where I find the governors taking positions that I consider as apt and decisive. And uh, this is like an alternative to the natural cry for state police because the insecurity in every state is peculiar. So, and the idea that we profile a criminal element in a particular name or particular uh, description is what has given the opportunity to the criminal element to perpetuate you know, crime in the various states in which they are operating. The governor has the constitutional right to take measures to protect uh, his citizen. And that's why the, the, the House of Assembly of the State can enact a law like the way they did in the southern Nigeria to ban open grazing. And the argue, argument that that is not constitutional is also a debatable argument. And I don't think that banning, uh, restricting movement for the purposes of preserving the safety and the peace of the people, especially when you look at that, having regard to the provisions of the Land Use Act, can be construed as an unconstitutional. Mean. But if you permit me, there is a context that we need to put this conversation into. The idea that the president is insisting on locating a grazing route. I listened to the interview where I heard for myself how the president said, when he was, the question was put to him, he now said, I asked my attorney general to dust the old uh, Northern Nigerian anti-grazing, uh, Northern Nigerian grazing uh, laws, and then locate the grazing route. And then he told the people interviewing him, do you want me to contradict my attorney general? It is at that, I'm a careful listener. It is at that point I felt the president's decision is anchored on an advice by the attorney general. Unfortunately, 
the northern Nigeria and the northern, uh, yes, the grazing laws of the northern Nigeria, which came into force in 1956, does not have universal applicability throughout the Federation of Nigeria. Those who argue and say that that law finds residency in Section 315 of the Constitution, which provides that nothing shall preclude an existing law from having the force of law so long as it is not cons inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution, should also look back to this issue that at the time that law was enacted, the entire northern Nigeria was one, under one legislative branch. But in this case, Nigeria is operating a federating unit where you have various states and there are various laws. So can that law have be applicable in two states that operate distinctive law-making powers? The answer is in the negative. And that is why it is my belief that the idea of grazing roots will never sail in Nigeria even looking at it within the framework of the law, not even talking about the politics of it. So the president asking and asking a committee, a team, uh, headed by the chief of staff, to go and do just that. If you say that it, it will not hold water, uh, you're invariably saying that that is a, is a task uh, for, of, uh, of no consequence. Right, because locating a grazing route across Nigeria means that the committee or whoever is taxed with that responsibility will be mandated to go into states that under the Land Use Act is under the powers of the governor to begin to then encroach on those land. But well, he said that in that uh, statement that was released by mm -hmm. the Office of the President, that in, in conversations or in uh, consultation with mm -hmm. stakeholders, which I presume that the governors are also come to the part. And they are also stating in that statement that... They will also consult the state of which states out of 25, 25 or so states right. that are consulting, which of them want to release their land. I know that because of the laws of 1956 in the north, you are going to find a greater number of states in the north agreeing to that and even providing land. Because if you remember, that decision that brought that law into force in 1956 was a decision that was guided by economic you know, advantage, yeah, economic motivation. Because at the time, uh, animal husbandry was the baseline of economy of the North, apart from agriculture. And so it was imperative at the time to enact the law that all parts of the Northern region were, was going to be acceptable or agreeable to it. So you might find states in the North that, are, that will agree to that and even provide the land. But its application in states that are not willing will now raise the issue of constitution. And to me, it's not even something we we should go to the moon to come back because it will now be in clear violation of the land use act, land use act which of course the ravi is under the, the, the yeah and is under the purview of the governor That's the governors right. have the right and the prerogative to be able to That's determine right. that so um mr uh, mr shigwe give us a sense of the kind of decision made by governor masari today how in the face of the nigerian constitution uh the the, the governor said that the power was derived in the subsection two of the uh, section 176 of the constitution when he made that uh, executive order but how powerful is that kind of executive order banning the transportation of cartoons and what effect do you think it will have in the scheme of uh, the security situation in katsina state for example chairman i'm not um i'm not um i don't know how to say it but i'm not a security expert but i will tell you this the problem with that executive order is that governors hide under the act of making executive orders to assume lawmaking powers. And this is a clear case of executive lawmaking not backed up by law. Now, the constitution has given the executive the power to execute the provisions of the constitution and implement provisions of laws made by the legislature. So for, it means that when a governor or a president makes an executive order, it will be to give effect to an existing law made by the legislature of that state. And instead of Governor Masari pointing to Section 162, he said... 176. 176. Section I thought he would have pointed me to a law that allows him to do what he's doing. But I weep for the people of Katsina State or people of neighboring state who may need to pass through those routes. And it worries me that some of our governors and indeed persons in power don't see it as anything to just wake up and close down roads 
without providing alternative roads. Even if shut down businesses. And I wonder what is the rationale for singling out cattle transportation. Not goat, not chicken, not some other animal. Well, and then, well, sorry, apologies uh, before you go far. Please. Do the governors have the power and the prerogative to make decisions to secure the lives of those whom they govern? Even such laws or decisions that are exigencies, uh, and I say exigencies in the sense that when it affects the lives of people, and you needed to make an urgent decision no, no, to no. stop the killings of people, Katsina said, as being on the receiving end also of this banditry. Now, Shell, the fact that a state like Katsina, like quite a number of states now in Nigeria, that have been under, or that have been on, under constant security threat, need to take action, does not mean that any action is thereby justifiable. Some actions don't make sense. And I, I'm trying to find an my way... An executive order is not... And, and, I, and I'm trying it, to find my way around this executive order. And uh, uh, regrettably, I, did not, I was not able to read it before coming in here. So I don't, do not also know whether this executive order has an end period, has a duration. Are the people, will the people be unable for, to use this slow road for as long as it pleases the governor? Are the people passing through other states affected by this executive order? And when you say commercial activities... Is there any rationale for singling out commercial activities, commercial uh, transportation, existing from private transport? And how do you distinguish between the two? We must be able to look at a problem holistically and find solutions that address those problems. We don't just have a knee-jerk reaction. Maybe somebody whispers into the governor and says, shut down the road. You shut down the road. Without caring about its effect on the livelihood of the people, on so many other things. Can and such an executive order be challenged in court? Obviously. People are affected by it can challenge it. Well, because but, but, it I, but I fear that this nail speed, if you call that speed at all, at which matters go through our courts, may not bring succor to the people. The executive order takes effect today. It takes effect today. And uh, the, 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 one of the issues here is that the governor says it comes out of the issue of security and the need to protect the people of the state. And uh, the executive order uh, is, was issued um, yesterday, and it takes effect today. But again, if you look at it, some of the, uh, the issues that the, pres uh, the, the governor in uh, Katina State raised, he cited the security challenges, the containment order, and he said it should come into effect today. And these are some of the things that I understand are also based on the consultations and meetings by a committee set up by the governor. You know, I would like to believe that some of the roads affected by this ban on movement are interstate roads. Neighboring states. People from uh, neighboring states may be unable to pass through Casina to get to their distance, to destinations. They may have to look for alternative routes or be unable to move. Or in a normal situation, it may, may, may create an opportunity for unscrupulous security agencies to have a bazaar. But is there an option, uh, an alternative option for the governor? In the face of what is happening. And I would like the governor to convince me how this issue will stop the security challenges being faced in Kassina. And I dare tell you that it will not scratch the surface. At a time like this, I said this on a program here or some other forum, that we should be worried that at a time of great security challenge, there are no emergency numbers people can call. When people are kidnapped, there are no security agencies to provide guidance and assistance to victims of these kidnappings and all that. And I thought... A governor faced by such security challenges would be more interested in putting this infrastructure. How is it possible that people will kidnap over 100 people? I move them across hundreds of kilometers and nobody stops them. Nobody gives information. And nobody is able to stop them. Let, How are they able get, to get supply? Let me get How is it that the local populace is not able to provide? Where are they keeping these hundreds of people let me get your and keep view, them for uh, weeks? Mr. Shugel, let me get your view on the anti grazing law that was signed today by Governor Akiri Dolu. It's part of the agreement by the southern governors. Are you in support of that? Now, let me say this, Shen. Unfortunately, most views being expressed in Nigeria are being seen from the prism of ethno-religious politics. And people are being... Some people, people look at you from where you are from. Certain decisions are being looked at from the point of those who are making it. But it is open grazing. The idea of nomadic heading a problem in Nigeria, clearly it is, has led to crashes. The clashes between communities. It has led to so many deaths. Will any government be right in finding solutions to it, of course. And I think instead of the federal government 
being besotted with the idea of having restoring grazing roots. And I agree with, me, with my, my colleague, Mr. Abuala. I cannot see that law of Northern Nigeria standing in the light of the clear provisions of the Land Use Act because it means that even if there was such a root, remember, it, it says roots, it did not say federal lands. It's not as if federal government acquired the land that constituted the roots. So it means you're going to violate private ownership of property to reestablish the roots. And what happens if there have been buildings? Is the federal government going to pull them down? I think it's time we sat down to look at this issue of nomadic heading, is effect on the economy, is effect on peaceful coexistence of various communities, right. and address them. Right, and, and, me... I, and I think the states that are passing laws should also find a ways of also making those that will be adversely affected by these laws to be, also uh, have a sense of belonging that it is not being targeted at them because they don't seem to be indigenous to those states or the communities where they are found. I'm itching to know what Mr. Buala's uh, views are going to be on uh, Governor Masari's uh, decision. But just for a moment, let me bring in uh, the senator. Uh, because uh, the senator is involved because he states now the governor in your state now has passed this bill. Were you looking forward to it? And how does this come to you as a senator from Ondo State? All right, let, let's just uh, give the senator a moment to, to do just that. But I, I wanted to know what's your view on Governor Masari's executive order. There are two issues with respect to the decision by Governor Masari. Number one is that the law is that nothing shall preclude any law that is reasonably made in a democratic society. Meaning that Casina State can pass a law in the midst of this chaotic situation that can restrict the movement of cartel. But it has to be a law passed by the House of Assembly of Katsina. Unfortunately, most states in Nigeria, the House of Assembly don't make laws. They take directive from governors. That's one breath. Then the second breath is executive order. For the governor to issue executive order of this nature, the appropriate thing for the governor to do will be first to declare a state of emergency. Then he can give an executive order because state of emergency is a way of circumventing the law within the ambit of the law. So uh, let, let's get it clearly. President Buhari signs executive orders. Right. So the governors don't have the right to sign executive orders. They do have. Okay. But the nature of the executive order, for example, you can sign executive order regarding health matters. This is a pandemic period. But this is security matter. Security matter is not something that comes with time. It is enshrined in the Constitution. The security of life and the welfare of the people is the responsibility of government. It's there. So it is not like you are saying we did not foresee it. And you are now going to touch fundamental part of the Constitution, which is the restriction to their right to move, right to carry out economic activities is fundamental. So to be able to do that, you first, you first must establish that the state is otherwise not in a right situation for normal governance, which is declaring state of emergency. When you do that, then you issue an executive order that must also have a time limit, like the way my senior colleague said, it cannot be in perpetuity. So you must say that this ex executive order is issued consequent on the state of emergency for so-so period within so-so period of time. But it seems that we, in Nigeria, we are not ready to follow procedure of law. We just issue an order that anybody can go to the court of law and challenge it now. For example, the Constitution says if there is any law that is inconsistent with the provision of the Constitution, that law to the extent of incons uh, inconsistency is void. So the person will say the Constitution says I have right to move and I have right to carry out economic activities. Then you are now bringing the executive order. The order and the Constitution, which one is inconsistent? But if you declare state of emergency, and then you issue executive order. If you look at the Constitution with respect to the powers of executives to declare state of emergency, it permits of this kind of So situation. can a state, a state government declare state of emergency in his own state? State House of Assembly, I, I make the case that State House of Assembly can pass a resolution that the governor can act upon it. Now, alternatively, the governor can also seek that the president declares a state of emergency. But usually, when the president has to declare state of emergency, it is in a situation where there is War. obvious chaotic situation yeah. in the state, but the governor is not cooperating. There is need for federal intervention. That's why the president can go ahead. But nothing precludes or prohibits a governor from declaring state of emergency like in health, in education, when, including... So, so when the president declares a state of emergency in the state, the powers of the governors, from what I understand, is suspended. No, he okay. does not suspend still, the powers... 
of a democratically elected governor. It still acts in the... In it the... only permits the federal intervention in the state for the purposes of addressing the very purpose for which state of emergency is declared. So if there is insecurity, there is riot, a religious crisis in the state that the governor has now become incapable of managing. The president declares state of emergency and sells federal troops, which ordinarily will, he will not have the power to just send troops into the civil society. But because of the declaration of state of emergency, he can send federal troops to quell the situation. But while that is going on, it does not stop the governor from carrying out duties as ascribed to him by the Constitution. All right. I, I have a feeling that uh, the senator is back with us. Okay, I understand now that it's not, uh, we're still trying to fix up uh, the, the technical issues with, with his connection. Uh, so, now that the governor has uh, done the executive order, which uh, it does look like the two lawyers here don't uh, quite agree with that move. Um, so, can, can there be a retroactive move just to make things work or not just to make things right? Now that for you, you think that it's not the right step to make. But he said he's made it because of the security of lives of his people. Now that that has been made, can he, what else can he do to make it right? Now let me say this, Show, A legislature can pass a law that is retro, retroactive or retrospective, where it will not create an offense or make an act or omission that was not such an offense before the law was passed. So in respect to civil matters, this House can pass a law tomorrow and give this law effect to say a few days ago to justify the action of the governor. Because the right to freedom of movement and some of the fundamental rights in the Constitution can be derogated from by a law justifiable, justified in a democratic society. So if there is a law that we see as, I mean, any democratic society to be right, I'm talking about the absence of law. Now, I'm not, I'm not also saying that um, a governor cannot take certain steps. But when the law is so drastic as to almost extinguish people's rights, people's rights to carry on their economic activities, to move, or for even travelers to pass through that state, such, a, such an action or order by the executive should be grounded in a law duly passed by the legislature. All right. Let's take a breather. And when we come back, I'd like to get your final thoughts on the way forward. The anti-grazing law, um, the, herder, the farmer herders clashes, and the way forward for Nigeria is a major issue. But also, don't forget tonight, we have for you Mr. Ife Adebayo, who will be joining me. He's uh, the advisor to President Buhari on innovation. He will be talking to us about the 2,000, uh, 20,000 graduate jobs for Nigerians, the initiative that was launched today by President Muhammad Buhari in conjunction with the United Nations. Don't go anywhere. Conversation continues right after now. Many thanks everyone for staying with us right here on Policy Today on Channel Television. Let's get uh, con uh, let's continue with the conversation now. Um, Mr. Afam Osigwe, an advocate of Nigeria, and Mr. Daniel Boala, a lawyer and a member of the Lincoln in London. Both of them have been sharing their views. Um, sadly, we've not been able to connect with um, Senator Tofuomo, um, Nicholas Tofuomo of Ondo, Ondo South, the senator in the National Assembly, to give us his view on that, the law that the governor of Ondo State just signed today. But we'll get to him in, uh, in a moment. Let me get uh, some of your uh, closing thoughts now. With what the president has said, and a lot of reactions have trailed it, on what the president should do and not what the president should not do. In fact, some people are saying it's not a prerogative of the president. For the president should forget about it. Let the state governors, you know, take charge of, of the situation. But what we are seeing in Plateau State, the senator yesterday said, look, it's a situation of some people coming from outside to take over the ancestral land of uh, the, uh, the, the citizens of those communities. Now, the big question is, where do we go from here? Mr. Zigwe earlier said, we need to have a conversation. But what sort of conversation would that be? How do we move forward? Because these conversations are led to issues of security. Lives are being lost. Properties are being destroyed. Economy is being damaged because of this situation and the clashes. I, I think that the proposal, the earlier proposal by the federal government on the National Livestock Transformation Program or whatever, 
where a number of states across the north and the middle belt we are selected for the purposes of you know implementing that is the best bait in my view because ranching that that national livestock transformation program supports ranching and i think ranching is the best way i have for myself far from seeing it in you know, on television or reading i've seen for myself ranching in south dakota in 2018 when i had a meeting with the uh, senator john thun which is the senate chair on uh, commerce if you see the cows you would think they are elephants there is nobody doubting the fact that ranching will be look at the dairy product we are getting that are imported from abroad we can produce that and even more if we do ranching but uh, sorry apologies to cut in you are from the northeast yes, region I'm of the country the yeah. in the nature and in the orientation and in the world view of the herders does it work with them does it go down well with them you can tell us i know for a fact that not too long ago miete allah said that they welcome the idea of ranching in fact to be honest with you except you can prove me otherwise when it comes to the issue of these herders i mean this grazing road or ranching it seems the president and the attorney general are alone on this and that is why i faulted the decision of the southern governor to approach a method that is southern based because this is one of the issues that they have the northern governor's support but if they have all come together as the forum of governors saying that ranching is the way out and then the simple way, we don't explore that in Nigeria. It's a conflict between the state and the federation. Go to the Supreme Court and get interpretation. There and then it becomes a law that must be enforced. But either we don't have confidence in the judicial process, that's why nobody wants to approach the court to seek interpretation, or that they perceive that the crisis has not become evident. But I think that the southern governors will synergize with the northern governors who are agreeable on this point of ranching. And then you move All in right. that direction. Let, let me get Senator Tofu Woma, who since joined us uh, via telephone now. We needed to hear your view as a senator. Some of your people who have been affected, the governor has spoken out about this matter. How does this come to you? Did you ever say that this was going to happen? And when it did today and you heard it, what are your views on it? There we go. Uh, we cannot get a senator again. It's so sad. Uh, let me get the final thought of Mr. Osigwe on this one. Uh, you mentioned what you think is a possible solution. But uh, finally, uh, what's your position on the way forward? My position on the way forward is that we must check, look at the security challenges we face and not see them from ethno-religious sentiment, prisms or look at it as all politics. We must know that we face existential problems and I face them as a nation. It affects the rich and the poor. Many people cannot go home to their communities. Many farms, farmers cannot go to their farms. So many farmers can no longer evacuate their produce from their farms. Many people have to pay a tribute. Communities are threatened with kidnap and they raise money. People are selling their homes. And it doesn't matter where they come from. So if we are able to do this, then we must police our borders. We must not, we must, the government must take positive steps to check the proliferation of small arms. And government must look at these challenges and not look at them from a point of view. It is from the opposition. It is from those who do not wish us well. Because from one state, it has moved to other states, and it keeps moving and it's coming closer. And many people are moving towards some areas they consider safe. And many people are being profiled because there are certain areas, and as they are moving, they are seen as security challenges. Well, in actual fact, these are individuals who are running away for their dear lives. Either because young people are targeted or are being conscripted into criminal gangs or for some other activities. We must sit down as a nation and face our challenge and put aside politics or ethnicity or every other thing and face it, a, a, a problem that faces the unity of the country, that faces the livelihood of different communities, of different people, irrespective of their religion. And not take criticisms as an, 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 an attempt to undermine the, God, the president or any other person. In his home state, Kassina, there's a problem. In my home state, Anambra, there's a problem. We should sit down and face these challenges. And I agree with Buala that maybe because the southern governors made it as a resolution, maybe people in the north may not feel it's targeted at us. But they, have, they also feel many communities in the north are also trying to stop the nomadic open grazing. So it's a problem everybody All faces, right. and we should face it as a nation and put patriotism at the forefront of what we are doing and also join hands to find a solution to this problem so that we make a, 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 so that we will make sure that we stop this thing before it 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 it, it overruns a, major, a, a majority of the states in nigeria god it's forbid frightening. that uh, this thing get out of hand but the leaders need to make those decisions um <laughs> let's try again uh, sadly we've been trying to get to senator to uh, senator can you hear me now 
Uh, let's okay. give it another try. Uh, if you can hear me, what is your view on what Governor Akeredolu has done today? Sign uh, the anti grazing bill into law. Yes, the, the, the law is highly commendable because many farmers have suffered in on those states. Let me make reference to Shiv Ulufalai. His farm was destroyed many times without number. So the law will regulate all these cows moving here and there. And it's very unfortunate. United States of America, they have the largest number of cows all over the world. And they don't have problems with cows moving around. So it's important that both the state and the federal government should come together and create uh, cattle farms. What we need in Nigeria is cattle farms. When we have cattle farms, the cattle will be producing milk for Nigeria, and it will have been, and it will not drive farmers away from their various farms. So the law is highly commendable, and I commend the governor of Ondo State for taking the right for decision. But we need to move further than that by creating cattle farms. Senator, farms, let me quickly get your uh, get to know this. Have you been able to lay your hand on the bill? Do you have an idea of what it looks like? Some of the content in it? What comes out to you if you not lay your hand on it? Uh, have, you, have you heard about what it's all about and what comes out to, uh, to you in that piece of legislation? And very soon I'll go and study it and look at what is in there. But the most important thing is that the southern governors have taken a decision and the decision is meaningful by controlling movement of cows here and there, which is very important. And cow is not the only animals we have around. We have cow, we have goats, we have sheep, we have lambs, we have all these animals. So we cannot be celebrating cow in Nigeria. It's totally unacceptable. So the governor has taken the right decision. An understanding of how far reaching this uh, decision will be, for the people in, your, in uh, Ondo South, your constituency, how bad has this thing been? And if this uh, law it comes into effect, how far reaching will it be, the implication for your people? Yes, in, 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 in Ondo South, we have six local governments. During Chief Obafemi was time, there are agri settlements in all these local governments. We can revive our agri settlements and be using it as cattle farms. So there are agri there are agri settlements in most of these local governments. Let us revive these agri settlements and we can create where our cattle can be taken good care of and we put together and we can establish a cattle farm in all these not this agric settlement. Uh, Nicholas Tofawamo, Senator representing Ondo South in the National Assembly. Thank you so much for your thoughts. We thought that we could see your face and speak to us uh, virtually, but unfortunately, sometimes technology just messes things up. But, but we're okay with some of your thoughts. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Afan Bosigwe, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, thank you so much for coming tonight. And uh, Mr. Daniel Buala, a lawyer and a member of the Lincolns in London, thank you so much for your thought tonight. Thank you. I appreciate so it. Thank you so much.